Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Creative Journey, and I have with me today Belinda Farrell, who is the author of Find Your Frigging Joy, <laughs> and she's going to talk to us about that very subject. Hi, Linda. Belinda. Hi. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> so, how do we find our frigging joy? Oh, gosh, what a journey. What a journey it's been. I didn't want to write a book. I really didn't. And circumstances beyond your control seem to kind of pull you in certain directions. And um, I had something very tragic happen to me. I lost my son. Uh, he took his life because he was addicted to pain medication. Oh. He watched me heal my back, but he couldn't do the inner work that it takes to kind of get down to the root cause of why your back is collapsing. And um, after that happened, I also lost all my money in a Ponzi scheme. So I had really had the rug pulled out from under me. And I had been studying Huna, ancient Hawaiian healing for many years before. And I was using it to try to, you know, keep my life together at that time so I wouldn't be a burden to anybody. But the grief was just overwhelming. And um, a friend of mine saw that and dragged me to see a movie called um, The Living Matrix, which featured Dr. Eric Pearl. He was um, the founder of The Reconnection. And Bruce Lipton, who was also a favorite of mine. But I didn't think I wanted to go to anything that had to do with healing. I was just done. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you just say, I'm done. Don't do this. But she dragged me, and I'm so glad she did, because I watched... Eric Pearl do this, um, pull these frequencies or do a session on a little boy who had cerebral palsy, was um, confined to a wheelchair. And after these three sessions, he was up and running and playing in the playground and holding a cup for the very first time. And that really just made me take note. And I thought, I really want to know how to do this. And so I came back home and I got a session um, from a practitioner in Santa Cruz. And she didn't know anything about me. The best thing is not to know anything about you. And after that half hour session, all my grief was lifted. It was like someone had taken this huge blanket of cement and just lifted it off of me. And my, my joy in 30 came minutes? In 30 minutes, yes. And... I was amazed. I had two other sessions of this reconnective healing, and then I had my reconnection done, which is a series of drawings that are traced on your acupuncture points. And after I'd had that, it was a couple months later that I, I, I heard somebody say, you're going to write a book, we're going to help you, and that's all there is to it. And I went, okay, great, I'm going to write a book. And no problem, no argument there and I I had the help that I needed and for three years I wrote Find Your Friggin' Joy. Wow. And, and it was based on healing my back, which had happened twenty five years ago, um, based on the ancient Hawaiian healing of Huna. Mm -hmm. And then the reconnection, I added a chapter to that because the reconnection really kind of lifted you up, upgraded you to even a higher frequency. So it, it was a progression of, you know, how this all came to be. But if you don't fall down and then you get up, you, you want to relate that to other people, you know, mm -hmm. because we're all falling some way, broken, you know, we mm -hmm. need to mend ourselves. And so this was how I did it without having any surgery. Wow. That's amazing. I should. So and how did you find a, this person with the reconnective therapy? Well, uh, on the website for the reconnection, there's a list of practitioners that are in your area within a certain radius, 10 miles, 30, 30 miles, 30 minutes. So I just found somebody in Santa Cruz. This was eight years ago, so she's not there anymore. And I just went to see her and, you know, they're all just, you know, certified and know how to do this amazing healing. It's, it's as though you become part of this um, equation, you, the, the patient, and your higher self. And together, you, 
you pull and find these frequencies are of the client's higher self and they find the root cause of whatever it is that's healing them and they put you back into balance. That's the whole thing is they find where it is you're out of balance. It could be in the mental department, emotional, physical, or spiritual. And it's not up to you, the practitioner, to determine what that is. You just kind of, you're in the equation, but you kind of are, you know, just not making determinations. Your higher self is making the determinations. Okay, how interesting. So you kind of mix that with the Huna? I don't mix it at all. No, they're both very, very separate. The Huna uh, practices are meant to give you self-healing practices to heal yourself. And so forgiveness is the deepest uh, root of that, Ho'oponopono, which means to make right, right. And so I teach four different levels of that together with chanting, ancient Hawaiian chants, and symbols. The reconnection is meant to be done to another person. Mm -hmm. So clients come to me, you know, who are on the table for 35 minutes or so, but it's something that you do to someone else. So I keep them completely separate. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. So you get what you need, you know, that's what I always think. <laughs> Tell us more about Ho'oponopono. That was something that was introduced to me, as I said, about 25 years ago. I was on the island of Hawaii, and I was there just to do a master course in hypnosis and past life regression. And then these Hawaiians came in and started chanting and teaching us about this forgiveness process, really a relationship resolution process called Ho'oponopono. And I started doing it and started feeling better. And you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? If you start feeling better, there's something working. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I kept pursuing it. And what it was is, is just forgiving yourself for the way that you're attached to what people have done to you or how things affect you. And that pulls your energy down and it, and it costs you a lot of money because your energy is like money. But if you're spending it all on what happened to you in the past, you're not you're really using it effectively to become creative, mm -hmm. you know, really share your joy and to share your gifts with the world. So I started really learning how to cut my cords. And when you cut the cords, when you clean those connections to the past, what happens is that um, divinity comes in and replaces that with light. So you get to start again, and it's just amazing. It's amazing. It releases you, and it releases that person or that thing to meet you at a higher level. So let's say you were having altercation with your sister or your brother, and you just, just you know, at wit's end, you just put them down below you, you breathe on them send down light, and then offer forgiveness to yourself for holding on to the way you're looking at what they did to you. And you just say, you know, I'm sorry, I love you, I forgive you, thank you. And you're saying it with your higher self, which has already forgiven you. It's Again, you're doing this forgiveness with your conscious mind, with your ego. And you're just trying to clear all of that guilt and sadness and stuff away from the unconscious mind because the unconscious mind just wants to love you and run your body and it can't run your body if it's all gummed up with all these cords so the more you can clear that stuff away the more it will send your thought processes of love and healing up to the higher self and the higher self will heal your body that's what happened with me i i was completely crippled, I would say, with back problems, nerve damage. The doctor said that I'd never walk again unless I had surgery. And I remembered all of this stuff that I'd been learning in Hawaii. And I thought, okay, physician heal thyself. So I had no, I had no insurance at the time. I had been dropped um, 
I was an actress, I had modeled, I was a stunt driver, and I couldn't do anything because I couldn't walk. Mm, so, yeah. No insurance, no <laughs> nothing. I had to use my self-healing practice to heal myself, and I did. I was in bed for a month, but when I started doing all of this work, I healed within about four days. Wow. I was given an entirely brand new spine. Uh, the scoliosis that I had as a child completely went away. And it was like a miracle, like someone had given me my life back. Wow. That's amazing. Who did you study with in Hawaii? Um, my initial teacher was Tad James, Dr. Tad James. Uh-huh. But then, um, <laughs> you know, like every teacher, you move away from from people and you he, he banished me in other words I want <laughs> I know I'm a bad girl <laughs> um, I sent him a letter that I wanted I had this dream and I woke up and I had the whole script for this chant and forgiveness on how to teach the Ho'oponopono through the chants and use the symbols to help people let go of all kinds of negative thought forms and I thought he'd be so excited about it. And he just said, if I produce that, um, I will banish you. So I thought, but my higher self taught, you know, it's the one that gave me this. And that's so, higher than you are. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And Huna was meant to be shared. It's meant to not be just taught by one person. It's meant to go over all over the world. You know, the, the kapu, what they call it, the things that were prohibited were lifted. And he wasn't following that teaching. Even though he was trying to teach it to us, he wasn't following it. So he banished me, and that was great because I, it took me to the dolphins. And I started to get dreams about dolphins coming in and teaching me how to swim because I didn't know how to swim. I hated the water. And all of a sudden, I'm down in the water, and I'm, I'm swimming with dolphins, and they're downloading information to me. And... It was amazing. They became like my higher self teachers. And it was, a, it was the best progression that could have happened. Sometimes the worst thing you think ha can happen to you is the best thing. Mm -hmm. And that certainly was. Yeah, that's, that sounds impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and they've been my teachers now. I've been swimming with them for over 20 years and taking people. I took groups for 10 years, and then now I've been just doing one-on-one. -on -one. one person rents me for a week, and I take them out. We call the wild dolphins in, and I teach the ancient Hawaiian healing. It's, it's an amazing. The house is right on the water where the dolphins come in. Wow, that sounds very cool. <laughs> My drug of choice. Uh, dolphins. <laughs> Mine too. I got off of vanadepressants by swimming with the dolphin. Oh, well, then you know for sure. Yes. Yes. Amazing. How long, how long did that take? Was it one swim? Or... Oh, I threw them away the same day. Wow. Well, it's the sonar that comes through the water. It, it really just lifts you up, takes you to a much higher level, and eradicates all of that sadness and fear the the reasons you got on the depressants in the first place probably mm -hmm. yeah i did have some withdrawal from the drug but it was i think i would have not even had that if i'd have kept yeah. swimming with the dolphins well it's okay it's to remind you what you came from <laughs> <laughs> i guess so <laughs> i guess so um Okay, so do you have a website? Yes, it's Huna Healing, H U N A Healing.com. Okay. And there's information on my journey to Hawaii, which I take in uh, September. And it has my CDs on there, the chanting CDs, and as MP3s or as a regular DVD or CD. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And have my book there as well, but you can also get the book on Amazon. Okay. Wow, this is fascinating. What else can you tell us just in this? Well, again, you know, letting go of fear is probably one of the main things that we strive to do in our lifetime. 
I was afraid of so many things. I was raised Catholic. I was taught to feel guilt, but I seemed to kind of brush that aside. And I was in a long marriage, and I divorced at, at 40 years of age. And then I started to um, walk on fire with Tony Robbins. That'll get you out of fear really quickly. <laughs> And I did 18 fire walks with him. And each time I grew, you know, in the way that I thought I could never grow. And then I started saying to myself, well, if I can successfully walk on these hot coals, then what else can I do in my life that I thought I couldn't do? Right. That I wanted to do. And what came up was that I really wanted to drive a race car. <laughs> uh huh. And I had you know, loved bikes, I loved wheels, I loved um, scooters when I was a kid, but I didn't even know how to drive a stick shift. So t- <laughs> Tony teaches you that if you say you can't, then you must. And if you must, then you will. So I thought, well, I can't drive a race car. Oh, but I must. And then I started to call around and to see if there was a place where I could just learn how to drive a race car. And so that was Sears Point in, out in Sonoma, in Northern California. And I went there just as, a, you know, one woman and was in a class with nothing but guys and scared to death. And I just said, you know, I'm a sponge. I don't know anything. They knew everything. One of them, some of them, I guess maybe all of them were part of a Porsche racing team in Canada. And... Uh, you know, they were a little intimidated by a woman there, but I mean, I couldn't even, I was no threat, really. <laughs> <laughs> no threat. But as we started advancing, it was a four-day Grand Prix road racing course. I found out that I did have a little talent and I could make my marks and I was really teachable and learned how to heel toe downshift with a double clutch and drive a Formula Ford. And at the end of the four days, they hired me to drive for Buick and Cadillac in New York. And that's wow. how my, my stunt driving career started. And I came back and they created more classes for me to learn um, precision driving and spins and slides. And so if I hadn't listened to my unconscious mind, I hadn't listened to that vet saying I'd like to drive a race car, I would have not had the experience of this amazing career that I had for till I was 50. I started when I was 41 and I went until 50. Wow. That's amazing. (laughs) So you have to listen. You have to listen to what's coming up from you. Even if it sounds ridiculous, it's, it's guiding you into a direction that you probably thought was not possible, but that is your, your soul's, you know, desire. And it just broke me, it broke away all kinds, shattered the the ceiling, you know, the walls that, you know, I could really do something that I thought I couldn't do. That's amazing. (laughs) I find myself thinking I'm too old to do that. (laughs) Well, see, I hate that, that phrase. You're not, you're, you're absolutely not. You have to think you know, like you were not in this body. I mean, you have to be practical too. You're not going to do s- stupid things and jump off cliffs without a parachute, <laughs> you know, but, you know, you're just going to do things um, somehow to fulfill that fantasy that you've had, you know, something that will link yourself towards that. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I still roll, I'm 72. And I still rollerblade, not like I used to, but I still get those skates on and move. Uh Uh-huh. Cool. (laughs) So, I mean, I just think you have to keep moving and living. If you don't live, you'll die. And you'll you'll die a spiritual death. And that's just not, that's not appropriate. (laughs) (laughs) Not appropriate. No, 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 no. That's a good way of putting it. (laughs) It's not appropriate. Not appropriate. (laughs) (laughs) Do you use that uh, ho'oponopono that goes, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Yes. Thank you. I love you. Yes. It's just, I'm sorry. I forgive you. There's no begging. Yeah, there's no begging because you're already forgiven. 
you're just forgiving yourself for the the stuff that the conscious mind conjures up which isn't true the conscious mind is always making up stories because that's where the ego lies so you're just clearing away all those illusions from your unconscious mind that's dragging you down so you just you know say i'm sorry i love you i forgive you thank you and you can keep saying that daily i i say it at night when before i go to bed when i'm taking a bath and then all of my thought forms, you know, that were of a negative form, they go down the drain. I like doing that at night. Um, in the ancient times, families used to, to round themselves up in a circle at sunset. And they'd watch the sun go down into the water. And that's where all their negative thought forms would go. So now we can do it in the shower. We can do it in the bathtub. You can do it in the car. You can do it anywhere. It's, it's again, it's a mantra that you carry with you because as you do it, you don't even know what's coming up that you're erasing and you want to keep erasing. So it's like you brush your teeth, right? Mm -hmm. you, you wash your hair and clean your body and you make yourself look good on the outside. Well, you've got to do the same on the inside because that's what's running your body. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that's a little different than the ones I've seen online that say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Well, the please, I don't know. I think that comes out of guilt and this isn't a guilty thing. You know, you're not begging anybody. You're forgiving yourself. And so you're the one deciding to do it. I'm, you're saying, I'm sorry. I love you. I love you, meaning I love me. Mm -hmm. I forgive you. Thank you. Because you've been holding on. These are your cords. They're your thoughts. They're your perceptions. It's the way you filmed it and how you're looking at it. So you're changing that way. You're, you're becoming the new art director and you're creating a different story. Cool. <laughs> So there's no real please in there. You know, it's, you're, you're doing it. Okay. Yeah, please kind of puts it in the future, doesn't it? Well, and it, and it weakens it too. It's like, what if he doesn't, you know? <laughs> and, there's, and there's no doubt when you decide that, that you're going to change this, then you're cleaning yourself. This is a sacred I. I, I am. You're becoming in present time. So you're letting go of the illusions that you've created with this story in the past. You know, you can liken it to paying a lot of money on your electric bill. Do you leave the house and leave all your lights on and everything, water running, everything? You do that? No. <laughs> okay, so you try to turn everything down so you have a, a much more inexpensive bill. So that's what you're doing on the inside. You've you're unplugging from the stories that are costing you a lot of energy and money. And the money is in the healing department. Because if you have a lot of anger stored up and you get angry every single day and anger triggers you, you're creating chemicals in your body that will bruise your heart muscle and cause an early death from a heart attack. Wow. That's not good. So we're, we're talking about you know, you running your own pharmaceutical laboratory inside yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you you'll change your actual chemistry. Yep. It, because you, you are the computer, your free will, your conscious mind is the computer, and you're talking to the hard drive, your unconscious mind, which is doing exactly what you're saying. It does exactly what you say. So if you get angry, it will immediately create a chemical that goes in and bruises that heart muscle. If you're sad and you're just really, really, really sad, it keeps lowering all of your uh, healing energy. Your immune system gets deprived. What is, what's yeah. the purpose of the I'm sorry? Well, you're just making a different commitment. Just, I'm sorry. You know, I'm doing it a different way. I love you. I forgive you. I'm sorry. You're acknowledging the memories and the people that you have down below you. The way you've been doing it. 
and you're saying, I'm sorry. I don't want to do that anymore. So that's what you're telling your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. And then you're just forgiving yourself for holding on to that. And as soon as you do that, it's, you can, I, what I add is a knife or scissors, a chainsaw, whatever it is. And I spin it around me and I shake my shoulders. And so it cuts the cords and I physically see these people and these things floating away. I take my hand and I watch them float away. And so it does feel differently. They will come and meet you again at a higher level to deal with the issues that, that you guys have between you. But it raises the bar. So if you were really upset at them, now you're probably not as upset or maybe the other person will come in and say, I'm sorry, I did that to you. I didn't mean to hurt you. It just changes. The whole what, situation changes. What if you're angry with them for how they treated someone else? The same thing. The same, the same thing. thing. Yeah, you're still attached to the judgment of how you feel they should have reacted with that other person. And it's still, you know, leaking energy from you. The judgments and things pull you down. It lowers all of your healing energy. So you want to just cut the cords and, you know, let them figure it out on their own. Okay. And you don't, yeah. What if you don't want to cut the cords with them? You just want things to be better. Well, they will be better when you cut the cords. <laughs> the cords are, what do the cords represent? They represent your judgments. Okay. Your, your agenda. The way you want to control the situation. Okay. You think it, it should happen this way. This is the only way it can happen. So what you do is when you forgive yourself of that, of that judgment, it cuts, it, it neutralizes the field so that it can lift off to a higher level, both you and that other person, and you can resolve your differences in a better way. Okay. Now these chants that you were given, mm -hmm. were they in Hawaiian? Yes. These so are they're, Hawaiian chants. So yeah. you speak Hawaiian? I do the chants. I can't say I speak Hawaiian. <laughs> I, I'm just a Hawaiian chanter. <laughs> yeah. Don't start a conversation with me in Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't anyway because I can't speak Hawaiian. But there's you... there's so many different meanings to to different words because the Hawaiians have only like seven consonants, five vowels. We have twenty two, twenty one consonants, and seven vowels. So they have many many different meanings for one single word. So it really has to do with how they're saying it in context. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would you be willing to do a chant for us? Sure. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a chant. It's about 45 seconds. Okay. And uh, it helps to move out some of the dark forces that can clog your, your organs. And it brings down the light of protection. So just take a deep breath. I no na ke kuya kanahi hele hele ki alehi hi a hi a he teti o hu o hu e tau a koko oh na ki no malui kalani malue ho. E o holu mahi ana ho kanehi kona kahu ho ho ano wahi ke I love Hawaiian chants. <laughs> Makes you feel just very unstressful. Mahalo. Oh, mahalo to you too. Thank you.
and thanks for being on our show today. Well, it's my honor. I appreciate and it very much. Once again, for any of our viewers who are interested, her website is hunahealing.com. Huna's H U N A. And I assume your book is available on Amazon? Yes, yes. Okay. And Barnes and Noble. And Barnes and Noble. Okay. And Ingram. And who else? Who else? I, don't, I don't know. It's <laughs> Probably have it all over the place. Okay. All Thank right. You. Thank you so much for being with us. And hope you will join our group, creativejourney.org. Okay. And it's free. So hope to see you there. Hey, thank you for the work you're doing on the planet. It's thank wonderful. you.